Welcome to the Jeff Eby Show. Jeff Eby Show. Where the talk is all about Dixon County. We welcome you back uh, to the show. I'm your host, Jeff Eby. We're so glad that you've uh, joined us today. Please like and share this video if you're on Facebook. And if you're watching on the YouTube stream, please like and subscribe. The more uh, we can get out to people to let them know that these shows go on, then the more people just find out what's going on in Dixon County. This show is all about Dixon County, and uh, we're just so happy to be with you today. Today we have a special guest, uh, Margaret Cole who is with CareNet, and we're so happy that you're here today. We really are. We appreciate you coming in and talking to us for a few Thank minutes. you. I'm excited to share a little bit about myself, but also about the life of CareNet and how we are making a difference sure, in this community. Sure. Well, go ahead. Let's uh, talk a little bit about your background, kind of how you got to where you are. We were talking a little bit, a little bit before the show, and I didn't realize you were from an, a faraway place. So yes. just, just fill us in a little bit about your uh, background. Well, you could probably pick up the non-Southern yeah. accent. Um, and I ended up in Tennessee via a man in uniform. But I grew up right outside of Pittsburgh in uh, Uniontown, Pennsylvania. And if you are around me long enough, you'll understand that I love sports. I married a non-sports person, oh, no. <laughs> but I have a legit man cave in my office at Carnet. It, if you are a Steeler fan, you are welcome to come and see my black and yellow office. I am, well, I grew up in Pittsburgh in the 70s. So that's when the steel curtain happened. Yes, yes, that I is that. when Pittsburgh was the city of champions, and that's because we won the Super Bowl, we won the World Series, and we won the Stanley Cup. Wow. That is how that nickname came about. Sure. So I grew up in Pennsylvania, and all of a sudden, this amazing person, David Cole, came into my life, I met him, and two months later, we were married. Wow. And so, and I just turned 19 when that happened, so he swept me off my feet, moved me to Charleston, South Carolina, and he was in the Navy there. Right. And um, in the late 90s, 91, he was able to get hometown recruiter here in Dixon. So he's actually, it's uh, Captain David Cole with yeah, this. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to him. He's with the city of Dixon. Of I've, I've known David for a long time now, and I, I've, I've worked with him on a couple of things, and I, I appreciate him. Yeah. I really do. He's, he's a, great a great guy. Man. He is genuine. What you see out in public is what you see all the time. Right. He's very friendly, very outgoing, such a great person, loves people. Right. And so when he got hometown recruiting, we moved to Dixon in 91. So we were actually active duty Navy. Wow. And he recruited for about three and a half years. During that time, we had our first daughter, Brooke, or only daughter, Brooke. <laughs> and she is an adult now, has a new last name. She loves that, that she has her own identity. Because when you are Margaret and David Cole's daughter, you just want yeah. to be <laughs> known as something else or somebody else. And so he got out of the Navy and he sold cars for just a little bit and then got on with the police department in 95. Okay. And during that whole time when uh, I think Brooke was four months old, I was planning on staying home with her. That was the goal. But I don't know if anyone remembers this ice storm that happened in February of 94. I do. I, do. We, I was in the guard at the time, and we got activated to kind of help out in West Tennessee. Okay. It was not a good thing. We were living down on Dozier Boat Dock Road. Oh, wow. 
and both vehicles got hit with the tree and the place that we were living. We had a little single wide down there on the river, and that also got hit with the tree. So here we are. David was at a, not a high rank, but he was mid-rank Navy person, and we got hit with three deductibles. So I thought, okay, I need to go to work. I didn't want to. I wanted to be able to stay home, but I knew that that was something that I needed to do. So I was able to get a job at, I think at that time it was Primdor. Now it's Masonite. Right, yeah. I so that. I started as a temp in the production control department, and I worked myself up to supervisor. So I took over a supervisor probably two years in. And so that's where I learned how to delegate. That's where I learned a lot of my leadership skills. And that was a great job, but it wasn't my calling. Right, right. And when the Lord got a hold of me, and that's something where a lot of people who know me know my, my testimony, I met Jesus in my office at Primdor, Masonite. And... Through a long series of events, I quit my job, and I took three weeks off, (laughs) and then I thought, you know what, I might need to go go get a job. (laughs) So I went to a temp temp agency, and I actually worked at Jackson Academy that is being torn down right now. I worked there. I had a medical transcribing background. So uh, I was there taking a test, and they needed a medical transcriber. So I was able to go there, and I worked there for about a year. And then uh, CareNet came into my life. And so I was only a year old spiritually. Right. But uh, the board and Chris Russell at CareNet saw something in me. So that was... September of 2000 wow. was when I walked in the doors as a staff member of CareNet. Now, when uh, you were talking about when you found Jesus, did did somebody kind of introduce you to that, or or how did that happen? David and I, we were we just had this pull that we wanted to, because of, of course having a daughter, right? You're wanting to um, bring your child up in church. I didn't have a deep church background growing up. So when we lived out in Van Leer, we would pass Sylvia Baptist all the time. And when David first, it was probably 98, 99, the police chaplain was the pastor at Sylvia Baptist. Okay. So that was, that's where David felt comfortable going. Right. And we did. We, we, I started being, coming hungry for the word. Right. And Brooke was in a private school at UCA, so she was coming home and learning scriptures, and I was trying to help her, but I didn't understand it. And I really think that through helping Brooke memorize scripture, it did something in my spirit where the Lord started working on me. And then, not that it was a down spiral at the place that I was working at, but I realized that I was not in a healthy work environment. Sure. So that's how the Lord got a hold of me wow. at work. And I actually quit, and I didn't tell David. <laughs> I just came home, and I was like, this is what I've done. And it was a complete um, emotional turnaround for me. Sure. I don't know if you've ever had like a heaviness on you. <clears throat> yes. And then you release it, and then it's like you can breathe. Right, right. A, a big sigh of relief almost. Yes, it was unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And I was a 29 year old when that happened. Wow, wow. That is really cool. So you started at CareNet. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what is CareNet? What, I mean, uh, some people may not even know that, right. that, that y'all are here and what kind of services you provide or whatever. So just tell us a little bit about what CareNet is. Right. And how I explain to somebody that just does not know, we are a safe place to come to before making a pregnancy decision. Um, a lot of times, put yourself 
in a situation that you just find out you're pregnant. Right. And Jeff, it happens to the guy too. I'm sure. You have a huge say in this decision. And so think of that time in your life where you could have had, and I hate calling it a crisis pregnancy, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's something that was unplanned, it's happened, and now you do not know who to talk to over it. Because you have a lot of people that will give you their opinion. Sure. But sometimes you just need a safe place to go to to talk over your feelings, your situations. CareNet is not an abortion clinic. We do not refer for abortions, and we do not perform abortions. What we're able to do is walk somebody through that decision-making process in a non-judgmental, non uh, in a very loving way. Sure, sure. Because we want to meet them where they are. And I say they because we're not a women's issue. We are a family issue where a lot of times you have the father of the baby coming. You have the grandfather right. needing someone to talk to. You have the grandmother needing someone to talk to because you have all of these different questions and you don't know who to go to. Right, right. So is, is your clientele pretty large? I mean, with a, with a small town like this, you mm -hmm. would suspect maybe that you may have a few people come in now and then, but... I suspect that that's not the case. No, we serve Dixon, Hickman, Humphreys, Houston, Perry counties. Gotcha. But we're also in partnership with the Pregnancy Center in Davidson County, in Montgomery County, in all of our surrounding areas. The reason why our area is that vast is because there's not a pregnancy center in those areas. Sure. So we probably average two to three new patients a, m a week. So we average about 12 to 15 new patients a month. And not everybody that walks in our door is in a crisis. So we serve individuals of childbearing age. So if you are, if you understand the scientific of how you become pregnant, yeah. we won't go into that. Right. But... You also have to figure out, we have young, and we have, indiv we have women in their late 40s and 50s, because that to them is a crisis. Right. So that's where it is women of childbearing age. If you want to know more about that, just give Jeff a call later. Yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. So uh, as far as age, so I I'm assuming that you have really young uh, uh, women age, right, that come in? I would say the majority of our clients are between the ages of 18 to 25. Okay. A lot of times those that find themselves that are pregnant and they're teenagers, they have family support. Right. A lot of, I mean, you hear people say, well, if I ever get, if my mom and dad find out I'm pregnant, they're going to kill me. Right. And my question is, what weapon are they going to use? Right. <laughs> Right. A lot of times you do have that initial shock, but the goal is to bring in your support system. Don't try to get uh, help from your fellow 15 to 18-year-old. Right, exactly. Kind of like one of our local, she's actually on our board now, and she's given her testimony publicly, Brinzy Thompson Hurst. She walked in CareNet's doors when she was a freshman in college. She, and she found out she was pregnant and realized, I need to talk to an adult or somebody that's not 17, 18. Right. right. So she did walk into CareNet's doors, and her, her precious boy, Josiah, is 11, 12 now. Wow. So she was one of our very first patients that received a, one of our complimentary ultrasounds. Sure. So that's one thing that we're able to do is we're able to diagnose pregnancies okay. through ultrasound technology. And what we're and we have a whole medical we have a medical director, we have a nurse manager, so we're doing everything by the book. Right. As far as being a, a limited medical clinic. Right, right. 
All right, we're going to go to break. Uh, please stay with us. Uh, we're here talking with Margaret Cole about CareNet, and I'm sure you're going to want to continue to watch this as we go forward in our discussion. So we'll be right back. doesn't have to be one of them. Make a choice you won't regret. The foremost choice. Are you looking for your dream home? Well, Lee Realty Group guarantees you the perfect home. With our expert agents that have over 100 years of combined experience, you are assured 100% customer satisfaction. If you are buying or selling, Lee Realty Group is your local veteran-owned real estate company. Contact us now at 615-446-2006 or online at leerealtygrouponline.com. Like us on Facebook at Lee Realty Group. insurance carrier doesn't have to be one of them. Make the choice you won't regret. The foremost choice. Hey, we're back and uh, we're here talking with Margaret Cole about Carinet. And before we left the break, we were talking about kind of how it got started a little bit. So go into that a little bit because we were talking about that on off camera about mm -hmm. how it kind of got started and and who was uh, instrumental in in kind of getting that started. I love talking about this, and if you ever want a actual tour of Carinet, I love to walk people through. The facility, but we actually, how it started is back in 1993, Lynette Edmondson, she actually worked at the library, now she's at the senior center, her and her husband put an ad in the paper saying if you are interested in starting a pregnancy center, show up at the library at this certain time. There were 50 people that showed up. Wow. So that was in 93, and Christine Russell was one of those individuals. Alan Watson was one of those individuals. And so from 93 till 95, they did the steering committee. They met every week for, for probably a year. And then through the steering committee, they had their original board of directors. And Chris and Alan were both on the original board of directors. And they opened their doors in June of 1995. And it was the Crisis Pregnancy Services of Middle Tennessee. Yeah. And it was at 101 West Railroad Street. Okay. Where, let's go, let's back it up just a little bit. When I first moved here in 91, one of my first jobs was at the old credit bureau. Okay. Which was at 101 West Railroad Street. So Bart Howard hired me. So that's where CareNet first opened their doors. So they were originally called the Preg uh, Crisis the Pregnancy Center? Of Crisis, Crisis Pregnancy, Pregnancy Services okay. of Middle Tennessee. Gotcha. And that was in 95. So from 95 to 97, they, tr they tried to make that area, that facility work. It was an office building. So it, it was, they, they tried. They did cubicles, certain things. They had the boutique, right. but it wasn't open to the public like what we have now. 
So back in 97, the house at 305 South Main Street came up for sale. So Alan Watson bought the house, went off of the board, and we paid him rent from 97 until 2003. And he said, when you guys are ready, financially, let me know, and I'll donate the building wow. to you. So from, of course, during that time, I walked in the door 2000, and the plan was always to offer medical services. But before we could do that, we needed to own the building. But we also needed to make sure that we were financially ready for that because that's a huge undertaking. So in 2003, we were ready. We knew we were ready to ask Alan for the building. So the plan was to ask him after the banquet that year. And I don't know if you remember, but the day before the banquet of 2003, Alan was killed in a plane crash. We knew his wishes, but we wasn't sure if his wife, John, did at that time. Of course she did. So in 2005, she came in, and we kept paying rent. You know, we never stopped that. We continued to, we weren't sure what was going to happen. 2005, Johnny came and said, we want to publicly donate the building to you guys. When would you like to do it? So we immediately said, let's do the banquet. So she did our financial plea that year. And that was in 2005. So she shared publicly that we were going to receive the building. And the crowd went crazy. We knew that. So that wasn't a complete shock to us. But she also said, and we're going to match dollar for dollar everything that comes in tonight. Wow. That we did not know. That the jaw dropped. Because at that time, we were making about $40,000 f- at the banquet. So the Watson family matched that. Wow. So that was our seed money to add on to the building. Because the house at 305 South Main Street, it was 1,100 square feet. Right. So it's small. And so 2000, and, well, when she said you're getting the deed, you, we didn't get it that night. So it was about mid-2006 that we got the deed. We did all of the planning. Um, we had somebody come in and donate the renderings of the building for us. I did not realize how expensive that that is. Right. So we received the rentings of the building, and then we started going into, we found a contractor, and then we started partnering with our community. There is a group out of, I think it's the Tennessee Baptist, where they have a group of individuals called Campers on Mission, Mm -hmm. where they go all over the country, and they framed the new addition. We have a local company, United Mechanical, donated all of the heating and air. Of course, I come from door manufacturing, and I know that plants do wrong runs right. all the time. So we need a tile. I call that's when it was cross full ceramics at right. the time. I knew I knew the manager, and he said, "If you can get here right now, I have 800 square feet, and it's yours." I said, I'm on my way. <laughs> so l- things like that. So what we were able to do in with that, that $40,000 in 2007, 2008, we were able to make that, and it is like the Lord tripled it. <laughs> I don't know how we did it, but we were able to do the new addition and the remodel debt-free in 2008. Wow. If you think about the financial of that time, it was so that was, and at that time, I was not CEO, and I praise the Lord (laughs) that I was not CEO during that time, but so Chris Russell was, she came on as our CEO in 96, so she was CEO of CareNet through the lean times through the wonderful construction times and getting us legally ready to go medical, getting the key people in place. I just did all the begging yeah. for that. You got to have somebody do that. That right? was my job. 
And so we did our very first medical ultrasound in November of 2008. So we're able to diagnose pregnancies. So we're able to bond mom, dad early in pregnancy. So in 95, we were Crisis Pregnancy Services of Middle Tennessee. In early 2000, we changed the name. We branded with CareNet National. We are under the umbrella of a, gosh, 1,200 pregnancy centers. They're not all named CareNet, but a lot of your uh, local pregnancy centers are connected with CareNet. So in 2000, we changed to CareNet Pregnancy Services of Middle Tennessee. And then in 2008, when we started offering medical services, that's when we changed the name to CareNet Pregnancy Medical Center. Gotcha. So the history of that and the stories, oh my goodness, I can tell you so many impactful stories of people that walked through our doors. And it starts with that group of 50 people at the library and Chris Russell's passion for this facility. And, um, And if you have heard or if you haven't heard our founding member and original CEO, Chris Russell, she passed away in August of this year, which was just totally unexpected, completely heart-wrenching for us. I know she is dancing with Jesus right now, but when you lose such an impactful person, and if you've ever been around Chris, and if you've ever heard her testimony of how CareNet came a part of her life, it is beautiful. And when she passed the torch to me in 2017, I didn't want it. I still don't want it. And it's just one of those, if you've ever become the buck stops with you Mm -hmm. type of person, and if you're ever over, first of all, a nonprofit organization. Right, yes. That is a whole other wonderful thing. But it can be difficult because you are raising the funds for this facility. But you're also responsible for the day-to-day for everything that happens in the, in the facility. Sure. In the ministry, we are a faith-based organization. That is something that we I'm so proud of the partnerships that we have. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because are, are there uh, local churches that mm-hmm. actually partner with you also? We do. We have an amazing faith community, and it ha- starts out with developing relationships. Sure. Going in and loving on the leaders in the church. And just letting them know that you are here. Because if there's a pastor listening, ask yourself, if someone comes to you on Sunday saying either I need to have an abortion tomorrow, what do I do? Or if an individual comes to you and say, pastor, preacher, I've had an abortion and I'm struggling. Right. Do you, as a faith leader, know how to walk somebody through that decision-making or that healing process? Sure, sure. So, and I've asked pastors this all the time. Do you ever get a call the night before asking for somebody, hey, I'm having an abortion tomorrow, pray for me? No, Mm -hmm. but you'll get woke up in the middle of the night saying, Pastor, I'm having heart surgery tomorrow. Will you pray with me? It's just something the church does not talk about. And that's where CareNet is that safe place to come to, but we're also that safe place for leaders to come to and help them to walk somebody through. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, most pastors really aren't geared or taught how to deal with with some of those things like that, you know. So I think it would be advantageous for all the pastors in the area to, you know, partner with you to bring those services that, you know, the church may struggle with because of some of the decisions Mm -hmm. maybe somebody has made or whatever, and it would be very difficult for them to 
uh, help them in right. those situations. You know, and that's where y'all come in. Right, and you figure that statistically, one in four women, one in four men have an abortion in their past. So that means, and it does not matter if you are in the church or you're out of the church. So I remember the very first time I spoke on behalf of CareNet to a church, and I realized really quickly that there are hurting men and women sure. because of just the look on their face, sure. because they might not know that I was going to come speak, and the complete fear that comes over them saying, i got to get out of here. And I speak to that person first. Right. Because I can either be a reminder of a decision that they made in the past or a reminder of how they helped somebody make that decision. And it is, it made me fall on my knees praying for that individual. And I remember the very first person that that happened to me, it was my home church. She just now... 21 years later, shared her story with me. Wow, wow. And it was, and she's ready to share it. Right. And I told her, I said, girl, I'll be there. I'll be in the front row with you. Because that is the hardest thing because we have, and I'm going to go a little bit Saturday Night Live with you, we have a lot of church ladies yeah. <laughs> that will shut somebody down immediately of something from their past because of something that they've said. Right, right. All right, let's hold that thought there. We're going to go to break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about some of the services that you actually offer at uh, CareNet. So stay with us. We'll be right back. doesn't have to be one of them. Make a choice you won't regret. The foremost choice. Are you looking for your dream home? Well, Lee Realty Group guarantees you the perfect home. With our expert agents that have over 100 years of combined experience, you are assured 100% customer satisfaction. If you are buying or selling, Lee Realty Group is your local veteran-owned real estate company. Contact us now at 615 615- 446-2006 or online at LeeRealtyGroupOnline.com. Like us on Facebook at Lee Realty Group. insurance carrier doesn't have to be one of them. Make the choice you won't regret. The foremost choice. Okay, we're back here with uh, Margaret Cole, and uh, we're continuing continuing our discussion about CareNet. And uh, before we left, I, I kind of wanted to go into a little bit about the services, the right. actual services that CareNet offers. So, right. if someone needs your services, they walk into your front door. What can they expect? Well, our we stay on mission. 
we make sure that we are in the lane that we're supposed to be in. Sure. So our main focus is pregnancy testing and diagnosis. So that is why we exist, and that is who we are. We've added several other services, but the main thing is answering that question, am I pregnant? And a lot of the individuals that walk through our doors have already had that experience because sure. first they'll go to the dollar store, get the dollar. Right. Then they're like, no, that's not right. No. So they'll go and get another one right. and then another one. So normally the individual, before they even walk through our doors, have taken five over-the-counter pregnancy right. tests. So CareNet does do lab quality pregnancy tests. If the test is positive and they are at least seven weeks, um, into their pregnancy, we're able to offer the diagnostic side of it, which is the ultrasound. And it is a, we're limited in the ultrasound. We're not going to be able to offer the prenatal care ongoing, but we have great partnerships with our local medical facilities, our local OBs. So once the, the pregnancy is confirmed, and we have a local doctor, Julie Perigen. She reads our ultrasounds for us. So once the ultrasound has been signed off on, our nurse will call the patient, give the report, and then all medical services are terminated at that time, and we go directly into the help side of it. Gotcha. So that's the next extension of CareNet, is we have ongoing classes for mom and dad, where it is educating. I needed CareNet when I first moved and became pregnant with our first with, with our daughter Brooke. My mom was 800 miles away, and here I am, pregnant, and just needed someone to walk through it. I wasn't in a crisis. Right. So it it's not only for unexpected pregnancies. Right. It's just anybody that becomes pregnant yes. and needs some help. And that's where, and we call it the MARI program, which stands for Making a Responsible You. And anytime you come to a class, you can earn vouchers that we call baby bucks that you can shop in our lower level, which a lot of the community may not realize. We have an upscale boutique in the lower level of CareNet. Wow. It's called Loretta's Open Door, and it's open to the public, so anyone can come shop. But also those that sign up for the program, every time they come to a class, they're earning vouchers that they can go shop. So we are in the, the life of this mom and dad during the whole pregnancy and up until the baby's five. A lot of times, once the baby's first born, we offer parenting classes, we do life skills classes, we do financial classes, um, we do basic first aid. You're not going to get certified in CPR. We have a local nurse that um, teaches the basic first aid, and we help them become the best parents that they can be as long as they need us. But the best thing, the cool thing is we're developing relationships Oh, yes. With mom and dad or the support person, but we're also becoming a part of their story. So I've been doing this for 21 years now, and I love when I get a, I have one individual that I helped her. She was like probably second year in when I was doing that. She sent me an invitation to her daughter's graduation. So you're in it for the long haul. You develop relationships with people. So the goal is to help them become a responsible you. But there are immediate needs that we are able to get help with, like get them information on housing, get them information on um help services, the help agencies in town. Sure. I have great relationships with our local nonprofits. If you're ever at House Blend on Monday mornings, you see that. You see that we are getting together with the local nonprofits, and we like each other. We pray for each other. So that's another thing is I'm not, we're not a food bank. 
We were never intended to be a food bank. That's not a part of our mission. The help center is. Right. So we're able to refer to them. So the goal is to help mom and dad not be reliant upon us, to be a responsible you, to be the best parents that you can be. And I love that we're always reinventing the wheel. Um, of course, when we had March of 2020, we did shut our doors for seven weeks. We didn't know. But we never once lost contact with our our clients because we had already in place, everyone could work from home. We already had all of our VPNs. If you're in tech, right. you understand. Right. <laughs> um, we, on our patient website, which is pregnancyhelp.net, we have an online chat and it's 24 seven. And a lot of our individuals love to send you a chat at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and we have an individual that is her job. She is our outreach communications director. She, her title is OCD. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what she does because we have to make sure that we're not the pregnancy center of 1995. Right, right. And we have to be able to move to where our clients are. If a pregnancy center is still putting ads in the yellow pages, they need a 20-ish year old person to come into their facility and to help them. So one thing that we've started doing is really looking at our client marketing. And who, what do you do when you're trying to find something? Like to buy? Or just to find information about. You know, you go on Facebook or, you know, you start do an internet search. Or right. Something you Google. Like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have decided to put the majority of our client marketing is into Google clicks. It's not cheap. Right. So that is one of our biggest line items now on our client marketing. Because I went through a class and it said if you're not putting at least 10 to 20 percent of your budget into client marketing, then you're not you're not, you're not on mission. Right, right, right. And that's scary. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. Well, that brings me to this point. How are y'all financed? I know is 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 there? I know you're a nonprofit, mm -hmm. so people can actually donate and get tax exempt for. Correct. But uh, how? What are uh, some of the other? Uh, finance means that y'all have? The majority of our f uh, financial donations come from our fundraising banquet, which is coming up November the 4th. Okay. We're going live. We'll be on YouTube and on Facebook, um, friendsofcarenet.net. You can look that up. Um, but the major we do not receive any government funding. And that was something that back in 95, the original board of directors said, Let's try to bring it, bring this as a partnership with the community. Um, so we receive monthly donations, one-time donations, a lot of church support. A lot of churches put us in their, in their mission budget. budget. Yeah. Because I feel like we, I'm a missionary. No doubt, no doubt. Um, I feel like I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, I just never went to, you know, to school to get that. Right. But when you are speaking on behalf of Jesus, he will equip you to love how he loves. And he will give you the heart of the person. He'll give you his heart right. for the person sitting across sure. from you. Sure. So, And we have a lot of business support. That is one thing that... If you are looking, if you watch TV now, you see a lot of businesses partnering with the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And it's called cause marketing. It's the business now has a cause to go along with because that is what this generation coming up, they want to know what you support. Sure. They want to know, well, who are you putting your money towards? So we have a lot of great business contacts and again it's by developing relationships sure. with with our community going in and not immediately saying jeff write me a check for a thousand dollars even though i want you to write me a check for a thousand dollars i want you to first understand who CareNet is 
and understand how important that thousand dollars is to CareNet. If it's not me, give it to the help center, give it to the Y, give it to somebody. Because that's where nonprofits, if there's a, a new nonprofit, we seek them out as fellow leaders in the nonprofit organizations. We don't want anyone to fail. Sure, sure. So if somebody wanted to donate money, I, I would assume they can go on your website. That's probably the best way is the friendsofcarenet.net. Right. And you can, I, I, can you set it up on a reoccurring charge? You can. That's the best way to do it. That yeah. is. And we take care of it. We actually have a partnership with a company in Nashville mm -hmm. called Kindful, and they help us with our donor database, and which is great because they take care of the website, sure. that side of it, and I trust them. I've vetted them mm -hmm. because you want to make sure that you are getting the help that you need as a nonprofit. So I will, um, that's the one thing about CareNet. We are good stewards of the monies that come in. For us to do a remodel and new construction in 2008 and do it debt-free. I know, that's awesome. Yeah, if you can be debt-free in an organization, it really helps you to be able to use what you get right. for what it's intended for. Right, and I want to thank our supporters for in. 2020 and 2021, they stepped up. We, because every nonprofit, when um, the shutdown happened, you didn't know yeah, what was going to happen. But Dixon's and our surrounding counties, they stepped up. 2020 was one of our best years awesome. ever. And I still don't know how it happened. Well, I know how it happened. But it's that the Lord took care of us. Right. Right. Really, he did. Now, what, what your staff-wise, what, what kind of staff do you have there? We have five, well, six, including me. We have six staff members. The majority of our help are from volunteers. Wow. And in our store and our lower level, that is probably our biggest need. Um, if you've ever worked in any type of a donation-based organization, it is ebb and flow, constantly donations coming in, donations coming out. So if you are a fashionable female, we would love to take your clothes off of, out yeah. of your <laughs> closet. Um, we stop for the, the store down below. This is a great partnership with the community. We have children's clothing birth to 1416. So, so we, we stop, stop at boys 1416. Mm -hmm. You might be able to fit in a 1416 boy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if any men's clothing we ask, please donate yeah. to the help yeah. center. But you're not going to take away from those that are going through the program upstairs. Please shop. And you can get some very fashionable clothes at thrift store prices. Now, as those dona donations come in, do, do you make them available or maybe to some... To some of your clientele. Also. Right. Yeah. If anything is in high demand, um, we cannot accept used car seats. So that is something that we always need is new car seats. But the issue is we don't have the room. Right. So we are asking individuals to $200 Amazon gift card, $200 Walmart gift card. Um, and it will be earmarked to that. Uh, we would love new cribs. So anything that a new mom and dad would need for a new baby. Um, you never know. We Sometimes we have a client that finds out, oh, my goodness, I'm having twins. Yeah. <laughs> That's all your face. <laughs> but that is something where we do not resell diapers. We will never put diapers out on the floor. So I remember when flood hit, we loaded up two van loads fulls of diapers and sent immediately to Compassion and Dixon gotcha. where they had it ready mm -hmm. for that. So we also partner with other community agencies. If there is a emergency, we're there. Sure. We are boots on ground. We're going to help those that need us. But that is something that new items we try to, we have a separate room 
just yeah. for baby bucks. Gotcha. Where no cash can be exchanged in that room. And well, I encourage you, come down. We're at 305 South Main Street. We're not open on Fridays. We are open the first Saturday of every month. Come check it out. Sure, sure. Um, so as far as donate baby stuff donation, mm-hmm. what what do y'all accept? So uh, not car seats and well, it, new car seats. Okay. Um, anything that a new mom or dad would need, gent or gently used. Please, if you do not, if you're going through your closet and it's ripped. Right. We can't accept it. Sure. We do not want not, to put. You're not the goodwill. Correct. Yeah. And we don't have a, a bulk, uh, somebody come and buying ripped clothes in bulk. We just don't have the room for that. Right. So that is something where gently use, if it smells launder it a lot of times um, that but if I don't feel comfortable giving this to one of our clients coming through the door that has just worked so hard for that I, and I hate to be picky but you have to be yeah picky. you have to be yeah yeah because you only want the best for those people I mean, correct I mean that's what you're doing you mm-hmm. know representing that and we say gently used right and we do have some amazing donors or I'm out and about, and I see somebody that's looking really sharp. I'd be like, girlfriend, you need to go through your closet. And what you need to do is go through your closet and then replace it with things in the store. Yes. Yes. My wife does that. Yes. yes. <laughs> it is so much fun. And the great thing is, the other day, I did not like what I was wearing. So I went downstairs, and I got me a new outfit. There you go. There you go. So anybody can shop in that boutique, I guess, is what you call it. And it's named in memory of Rita Holland from Waverly. If you're familiar with Holland Contractors, um, back in the day, they were the local, um, they actually paved our parking lot for free in honor of Rita's birthday the one time. So the the store is named in her memory, and if you ever come in, let me give you the the story behind the name. Right. And that's where it's called Low Rita's because Rita's legal name is Low Rita. So what else, what can people do? You know, I, there's a lot of people that probably don't know about care. Correct. So I'm hoping that this is going to be an opportunity for you to uh, really uh, open this up for everybody to know mm-hmm. what's going on in CareNet. So people can donate mm-hmm. money. Correct. They can donate Slightly used items. Mm-hmm. And what, el- what else can people be involved in with CareNet as far as well, maybe, um, you know, helping out, right. volunteering or whatever? I think the biggest thing is raising awareness. It absolutely breaks my heart when somebody that has been in Dixon their entire life, I never knew you existed. I know, exactly. But, but that's okay because a lot of times you don't know we exist until you need us. Right. So the biggest thing is being our voice in the community where or checking us out um i had an individual that was assumed that we did something and gave me a call and i was like no 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 no, come on in let me give you a tour that is the biggest thing is making sure that you walk through our doors i can give you the five minute tour or I can give you the hour right. tour. And I love to tell the stories. And the girls are so funny at, at work. They're like, Margaret, you talk too much. <laughs> yes, I do. It's, but it's because I... You have your passion. Oh, my gosh. If you, Yeah, you'll understand what I'm passionate about. I love what I do. I can't imagine. Now, granted, I've quit my job a lot of times because it can get really hard. Sure. Um, because you see such potential in people. And no matter what decision they make, I'm going to love you. And we're going to be here for that individual, that mom, that dad, that grandma, um, that grandfather. So the biggest thing is raise awareness. Second is if you have a heart for people, Give me a call or stop by and let me walk you through the different areas that you can serve. Guys, we need you. There's a couple things that we need. We need a maintenance worker. 
Um, we need somebody to come in maybe once a month and help us. We do have an individual that comes. Um, he's had some life situations happen. I need somebody that loves to weed flower beds. Um, that is something that can get out of control very quickly. We do have an individual that comes in and scrubs a deep clean once a month. But if you like to dust, you like to clean, we could use you. Be because by the end of the day, sometimes we just don't, we're exhausted. Sure. We just don't have the time. If you love to answer the phone, if you love to think, if you have the heart of walking somebody through the decision-making process. Now, I do understand that there are some, that you might have, a situation in your past that you just cannot fathom somebody walking down this decision, sure. then you will never sit across from somebody that is seeking an abortion. Right. A lot of times you might have somebody that has infertility, infertility issues, and it's just that they can't fathom that, that decision. You are probably not the right person to sit across from somebody. Or if you've had a past abortion and what we've talked about, you are screaming on the inside going, you can't shut it off, but you know that you need help. We're here for you, for that male or that female, because there are a lot of hurting men in our community that need to talk to somebody too, because they also had a, an abortion in their past. Right. So if you are a male and you want to help somebody walk through that decision, we need a male client advocate. Part of our plan is to hi hire a male staff member. I would like to do it today, but it, within the next three to five years, we need to have a male uh, advocate on staff. Sure, sure. Well, I can see where maybe if, if you're retired or close to retirement, and you want to really help out in the community, mm -hmm. CareNet would be a good place to mm -hmm. come just kind right. of just help out. Mm -hmm. and I know uh, some parents, you know, at, at when their kids go to school, you know, the, you know, some of them don't work, that would be a good time that Correct. they could come over and really help y'all out. And if you are an RDMS, if you are one, you know what I mean, uh, that is someone that is trained in ultrasound from top to bottom. Um, or if you are an RN and you have a heart to walk somebody through that decision making, we need nurses too. Uh, it would be great to have an RDMS because uh, what we have to do with them is bring their scope of services down to about this. But Or if you are a business or if you are a church and you want to financially partner with CareNet, if you want me to come and speak, on behalf of CareNet, I am not afraid to talk about what we do. I think you figured that out very quickly. <laughs> All right, so tell me, the when's the banquet coming up again? It's Thursday, November the 4th, so it's in three weeks. So if anybody can come and buy a ticket and come, right? No, we're sold out. Okay. We are at capacity. What we do is we have been very intentional with how many people we have in person. We okay. just want to be mindful of that. So, so we have offered the online version. We okay. did that last year. We actually had to change venues. I mean, it was it was wonderful last year. There was no stress putting on that that banquet at all. Um, but we that online option was amazing. And so we will start at 6.30. And during the dinner time for our in-person guests, we will be having um, an informational slide go through. So what we are asking people is to do watch parties. If you are a church, if you're a small group, if you're a business, get your employees together. Get your groups together. Cook dinner. I mean, and then at approximately 7.05, I, I hate to say we're starting right at 7.05, but at approximately 7.05, the banquet will go live. Okay. And this is the year um, I normally give a center update where I say what's going on, what, we're, what we've done and where we're going. This year, I, the Lord prompted me to give Chris's eulogy. So I will be talking about her legacy 
and her passion for CareNet and just the life, her legacy and her life and how incredible it it is. And then we have a guest speaker, Keith Farron. He is incredible. And then if you watch the banquet online last year, Deandra Marawa yes. yeah, we know is Deandra. going to, and, and I love saying her name yeah. that way. I say it correctly. Um, she is going to share her gift of song again. Awesome. And last year was, she brought, yeah, she's the, very good. she brought the church to the banquet. There you go. It was amazing. <laughs> well, we're kind of wrapping up our show now. Is there any any last thing maybe that you want to tell our audience about, CareNet? Anything you want to wrap up with? Um, I just think that don't be afraid to talk about this issue. Don't hide it. Um, really, the what we do, it's just a consequence of an action. So as a parent... Of a when I was when Brooke was growing up, I we talked about um, sexual activity, and that is something a lot of parents feel ill-equipped right. to talk about. Right. But it's something you have to talk about. Yes. It's not the 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 pastor's job. It's not the Sunday school teacher's job. Right. It's not the school's job. It is mom and dad's job to talk to your children, um, and I guess our daughter, Brooke, David being a police officer, me being <laughs> the school system, a uh, couple, I was called the sex lady, yeah, that kind of ruined Brooke, yeah, I bet, <laughs> but not being able to afraid to talk about it, if you need an outsider to come in and talk to your youth group, I love to go in and uh, just bring a different perspective on sanctity of life but also being able to talk about this issue and how to date, when to date, why to date. And I bring one of our board members, if you've ever met preacher Matthew Hyatt, he, when I go speak, he talks to the guys, I talk to the girls. Mm -hmm. So that is probably my biggest thing is equipping parents and not being afraid to talk about the hard things. Right, right. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I really found out a lot about CareNet, and I'm sure our audience has also. And listen, we really appreciate you coming out and sharing with us. I, I really enjoyed our talk here. Thank you. And um, um, I'm hoping that uh, people are going to just flood your your phone with, you know, volunteering mm-hmm. and just really stepping up to the plate and, and trying to help out. It was such a great cause in our community. We're just really absolutely just, you know, thrilled that you are in our community, and, and we're just lucky that we have the community that we do. Thank you. We're going to be here another 25. There you go. So we really appreciate it. Well, listen, we uh, appreciate you joining us in t- uh, today. Um, again, please like and share this video uh, if you're on watching on Facebook or like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. We really appreciate you uh, joining us. Also, tomorrow is the Sounds on the Ground at the fairgrounds. When we're going to be out there, I'll have a booth out there. So please stop by and talk to me. I'm going to be giving away some free T-shirts and some other things. So please stop by. So we really appreciate you watching us, and we'll see you next week. for watching we know that you enjoyed today's show join us each friday on your lunch break at 12 p.m for new insights into local events politics and all things dixon county remember to like us on facebook and subscribe on youtube at the jeff eby show or visit our website thejeffebyshow.com